depending on how far you can go. And you're definitely not going like First, your weapon is I've done this demonstration a hundred times. Over time, you're gonna end up going like this. I spent a a lot of years in the American military, and not that they're perfect or do everything right, but usually professional soldiers have a line, a certain thing you do and a certain thing you don't do. And when I saw the uh, war crimes atrocities that were being committed against the Ukrainian people by uh, Russia or the Russian soldiers, uh, I had to come. And I came here in, in a day, like two days after I saw the news report. Tuesday night I saw the report. Wednesday morning I was in Poland, Thursday night I was at an army base in Ukraine, in Kyiv. First, first came, no, I, I don't know any Ukrainians, I don't know Ukrainian, I don't know anybody here when I first got here. Uh, on the way through a friend who had a contact here, um, they put me in touch with the army base, but prior to coming I had no idea. Now that I've been here, I've been to, I think, 60 or 70 some different units uh, and we've trained well over 4,000 people, almost 5,000 people in uh, tactical medicine. I, I bought a one-way ticket. I don't have any idea when I'm going home. I thought I'd be here for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, um, but when I came here I fell in love with the country and I fell in love with the people. Everybody everywhere I go is hospitable, polite, appreciative, and it's just their personality and demeanor in such a crappy, austere environment that they're going through, but they're all so positive. And I, now that I know people, I have friends, we share pictures, we're on signal, we talk about our kids together. Now it's just not impersonal anymore. Now it's like, I gotta help these people, that this big, bad Russian bear and small, sweet, beautiful Ukraine. I, I, not that I'm obligated, but I feel like I need to stay and help more not just for me individually, but even generally speaking, all wars, civilians and citizens always suffer the most because they're the ones least capable to handle or deal with it. And any country engaged in any war, there's always a segment of those soldiers who commit war crimes. I think what's a little unique, or at least in my opinion, um, are some of the atrocities and war crimes that have been committed and committed repeatedly by Russian soldiers against Ukraine and Ukrainian citizens. Um, and how the rest of the world has failed to act, in my opinion, adequately or uh, in a timely manner. We, we NATO folks, we Americans, we drug our feet a little too long, and we gave Russia the advantage that they should have never had. When the war started, uh, the Ukrainian army is uh, not experienced enough and the Russians are the second largest and the most experienced army in the world. What makes us uh, so strong, as you see it? Well, in my opinion, a couple of things. First, even Putin said, you know, Ukraine would be over in two days, three days, whatever he said. But Macron, and not that I agree with the sentiment, but the message, Ukraine stop humiliating Russia. Small itty bitty Ukraine and you guys have proven the, the myth of Russian military prowess. They, I don't know if it's dumb luck or just pure incompetence, but you guys have shown the world that the small little guy can always still beat the bully. Um, so the, the skill of the soldier I don't know. I think it's their passion, their drive. They're fighting for their home country. I, I don't know anyone personally, but I'm sure some of the people I've trained, they, they know people who are in Bucha or Mariupol or Irpin or some of the other places where atrocities have been committed. And I'm sure like any soldier fighting anywhere, you're fighting for your country, your friends, your family. And um, they got a lot of passion and drive. So definitely it's rubbing off on me too. Could you say that our army now is more skilled than uh, three, four, five uh, months ago? I would say so, yes. Trial by fire, there's no substitute for experience. Not that on-the-job training, you don't want that in a war footing, in a war situation, but definitely there's been other people who have come and instructed, NATO instructors, some Ukrainians have left. I know a large group went to uh, Great Britain and they're getting trained and coming back. So yeah, definitely from when the war started to now, but the war didn't just start four or five months ago. That's, that's a misnomer that I encounter with all the units I train. Oh, we only had three months to get ready. 
No, Brat, the war has been going on since 2014. You might have not have been paying attention because it didn't affect or impact you, but the war has been going on for a very long time. But where they are now to where they were before, absolutely. I see a difference in the units I train if I'm here for two, three days from when I first got here to the middle of the time I'm with the unit to the time that I leave, you can see choot, choot, pot, choot, choot. Steps, baby steps, but they're steps. For many, many years uh, here in Ukraine, to stay in army, to be a soldier was like a punishment. In um, America, in Israel, for example, it's uh, an honor to serve uh, the people mm -hmm. of a country. Why it is so different in your country and in our country? Yeah, in the States, obviously, and I'm an adoptive American. I didn't become a citizen until I was 12. I'm an immigrant. But in the States, it's obviously, yes, it's more of a sense of a pride and a camaraderie and a belonging, and it's an all-volunteer force. I think some of the stigma or challenges with uh, Ukraine or any other former Soviet Union country is the Soviet Union stigma, the uh, mentality or mindset that you know, law enforcement is the enemy or the, the military are the bad guys or something. And you guys are only 31, 32 years liberated. It's still very new. It's a new concept. It's a new idea. It's a new mentality. But I think as the generations come, you know, another generation or two, and war changes a country, whether it's good or bad, all war changes any nation that's engaged in that war. Um, I think the Ukrainian mindset, the Ukrainian mentality towards being prepared, the military, law enforcement. I think, I hope that'll change for the better, change for the positive, so. Is the funding different? Yeah, absolutely. Is the level or quality of training for the soldier different? Absolutely. America is bigger, they have more money, they have more resources. Where they're the same, it's the same sense of national pride, motivation. You, I care for my fellow Marine Army guy as much as the territorial defense people care for their fellow territorial defense person. But are they equal in ability or skill? No, because the funding, the training, the timeline is much, much different. Can they get there? Yeah, it's not that they can't get there. They, they have the intelligence, they have the ability. They just need the support, the funding, and the time. Friends from America, what uh, they said about your... Um, my kids are older. My daughter's 25, my son's 26. I told them some of the stories and some of the sights and experiences I've had here. I've shared some of the pictures. Um, and they get it, they understand. You know, dad, do what you gotta do. Stay as long as you need to stay. Uh, my mom, they're my sisters, my brothers. The rest of the family thinks I'm nuts. I should be retired in home in California sipping some cognac or whiskey and I am here in a war zone for a country that's not mine. They're supportive, but they don't quite understand. When and how, in your opinion, as you see it, uh, Ukrainian will win? Russia can't back down. I don't think they'll back down because they're already embarrassed and, as Macron said, humiliated. If they tuck tail and run or accept a negotiation that doesn't favor them, it's going to be very negative for them on the world stage, more negative than it already is. I also don't see, and from what I've witnessed with the Ukrainian people, that they're just going to give up or quit or say, okay, well, never mind. I, I don't see this ending anytime this year. When? Well, I don't see the Ukrainian people backing down or compromising. You've lost parts of your country that you people love, that have been part of your nation forever. Uh, I really hope whoever the powers that be, Zelensky or the UN or whoever, as they negotiate a truce, it's equitable and fair. Um, and I don't care about humiliating one side or the other. Uh, what's just and right and fair? This is your country. You're not the aggressor. You should have never had happen to you what happened. So when will it end? I wish I had a crystal ball. Um, I don't know, hopefully a year from now we'll be sitting in a restaurant reminiscing, having a glass of wine, celebrating the victory. Maybe that timeline. Will you celebrate uh, the victory? Oh, absolutely. Some of the people I have come to know, we're, we're we're on signal, we're friends, we send texts, pictures of our kids, and we talk to each other all the time. It's not just um, a business or some impersonal relationship anymore. I will absolutely celebrate the Victory Day. But it's a long area.